to the left side of the driveway, there's some planters. The first one coming from the street has a uh, pink jasmine vine and a perennial in the daisy family. I'm not sure what color that is. And some succulents. And some other plants that probably won't last. Uh, the next one has more succulents, um, more of this perennial, a white potato vine, more succulents, some dusty miller, and then the last one has another succulent, um, more of the daisy-like perennial, sweet potato vine, purple, flat, purple leaves, a different dusty miller. Um, these pots need to be watered at least every week. Okay, in the backyard, um, along the garage, there are various colors of irises, um, a lot of interesting colors. Usually they bloom in the spring. Um, the edges of the yard, there's a lot of oxalis seedings, seedlings still coming up. These are weeds and should be pulled as soon as you see them. Um, if they flower, that means they're producing more bulbs and will take over. Um, there are a couple of echinaceas left. Um, this one, they die back to the ground in the winter. Um, this is a weed those out. This is another echinacea. Um, at the end of the bed there are some alstroemerias, these guys. Um, they make really nice cut flowers and they're very prolific in the spring especially. Um, see behind the garage, the mural area, there are various assorted leftover plants. Um, there are some primroses that will bloom in the winter. Um, and let's see, these guys are weeds. This is a lamb's ears. Um, and there's also a rhubarb, um, this plant at the end, um, which will come back in the spring. It dies down to the ground in the winter. Um, here's the greenhouse. Um, most important thing about the greenhouse is that it always needs to be vented because it gets very hot inside, even on cold winter days. Um, there's a prop for the vent, and we have three different sizes of props um, to prop it up in different amounts. Uh, there's also a back window. Um, and there's a little prop without the notches on it for the back window. Um, it could also be propped up toward the back fence. Um, let's see, the screen door allows a lot of ventilation. And we also have um, a plastic that can be screwed onto the door in the winter if it's too cold and if you have plants inside. Um, but usually in the, even in the spring and summer and fall, it's too hot with the plastic on the door, so leave it off. Uh, coming out of the greenhouse, there is a fig tree. It's a blackjack fig and it produces lots and lots of figs. We usually keep it pruned down to about six feet high so that we can pick the figs. Um, and it, it does grow a lot each year. Um, in back of that, there's a Phihoa or pineapple guava tree. And the fruits look like this. And they're ripe when they fall from the tree. And so you have to try to get them before the squirrels do. Okay, this is the backyard at 728 Hopkins. Um, coming up along the fence on the right side, there is a lemon verbena. 
Um, it is uh, frost tender to some extent. It may die back in the winter if it's cold enough, but it will come back in the spring. Um, and so I usually don't cut it back until uh, at least spring when it starts showing new growth, because otherwise um, it probably will die back. This is an edible red currant next to it. It looked really bad when we had the heat wave last summer, and I'm not sure it survived. Um, underneath it, there are some hyacinth bulbs that are just starting to come out. And looks like grape hyacinths here, this grassy one, and maybe some crocosias underneath the lemon verbena. Um, towards the house, there's a rain garden. Um, so these plants were just put in and they should be watered every few days, especially if it's dry, um, until they get their roots established at least. Um, these plants can take water. Uh, they can even be underwater if they were planted lower and survive re really well. So there's a juncus, the tall ones, the Short grasses are fiber optic grass, and then there's a mixture of pink and white yarrow along the edges. And then there's one Quintonia, this plant. It's related to miner's lettuce. Um, I think this one may die back in the summer, but it will come back and spread, I think, the next winter. The garden beds. Um, Let's see, there's a myrtle and a hackberry tree above it. The garden beds have a lot of kales left from last season. There's a sun sugar tomato, the first bed, with little uh, orange yellow fruits. Second bed has some thyme at the end with the little pink flowers. And that's either a thyme and oregano. And more kales. Some armeria native. And then another oregano. And then the next bit over uh, has some stinging nettles, which you might or might not want to keep. They're easy to pull out. Um, culinary sage and a whole row of garlic chives. Uh, there are also, looks like uh, fennel or dill seedlings coming up. These ferny looking things. And this is either a celery or a parsley. And some basil that hasn't died back from the cold yet. And some green onions. 